Okay, we have Temperance reversed, so Sagittarius. We have the Page of Swords reversed, and we have the Tower in reverse, Scorpio. The first thing I'm getting here, and this isn't necessarily something they would consciously say or think, but I think their initial impression of you might be inaccurate, or they just feel that they can't, they don't really get to know you initially, or they didn't get to know you initially. They had to, to give it time, they had to wait to unravel you a little bit more. They were left wondering a lot. Um, we have the Six of Pentacles reversed. Yeah, there's a feeling of you coming across, in their opinion, as maybe guarded or just difficult to get to know. Um, you're the sort of person, in their opinion, that you can have a really long conversation with and you think, wow, we really spent some quality time and got to know each other. And then half an hour later, once you've gone your separate ways, they're thinking, how is it that we spoke for an hour? And yet, if I had to write down all of the facts that I gained about you or all of the things you shared with me, I'd have about two. How did you, like, how did you manage to so skillfully engage me in this conversation? Um, I'm hearing hold the room. So maybe it's it's like you can, you can hold the attention of a group or if you're sitting around talking to a group of your person's friends or uh, family members, you can mingle with all of them very well. And yet, you know, over an extended period of time, maybe it's even like an afternoon, a day or whatever, but um, at the end of it, you've really given away very little about yourself. Um, <clears throat> but people don't realise this until they're thinking about you after and specifically thinking about what they know of, about you. Or like if someone says, oh, I heard you met so-and-so's um, partner today, you know, what were they like? And they're like, oh, really great, you know, really engaging, funny, interesting. Oh, okay, so like, what what do they do? What did you learn? What do they like? Um, well, I think maybe they like, you know, it's like you can't easily come up with things. Yes, Four of Pentacles, exactly. There's a, a feeling of you being reserved but not overtly so. You come across as being um, very open, um, very giving with your words, energy, emotions, very happy to connect with people, share. Um, but it's like some incredible skill you have. <laughs> that you can, you can do this and make people feel that they've really connected with you, but actually, I don't know, they haven't, or they have, maybe energetically, but they don't know individual specific things about you. Um, maybe it's just that you're very interested in them and you ask lots of questions about them or something like that. Yeah, look at this, King of Swords reversed. It's like you have this fantastic way with words and conversation and how you present yourself, but you're really giving them nothing of like substance. Um, okay let's keep going and it's not that they're left feeling resentful about this it's it's surprising it's it's shock it's surprise confusion that they're left with because um the impression they the initial impression was that they were getting to need very very well we have the eight of swords And if we think of swords as being obviously communication, we've got eight here. And yet this butterfly is still all wrapped up. You know, we're saying lots of things, but still we're, we're closed tightly. Impenetrable. Judgment reversed, some Scorpio energy there. And we have the, yeah, the Ace of Pentacles reversed. Okay, let's see what's on the back. Ace of Cups in reverse. <clears throat> Nine of Cups. So I think there's a feeling of... I want to know more about you. So this feels almost like I'm being told about a first impression. So this can either be the first impression you did make or might potentially make. Um, yeah, and the feeling is with temperance in reverse, um, you're ready to get stuck in. You're not um, overthinking, overanalyzing. You might come across as very self-assured and confident because specifically you're not looking around you and thinking, oh, I better not laugh too loudly, or, um, you know, I, I need to watch, first of all, how everybody else is speaking and behaving, and then I'll adjust to that. It's almost like this effortless 
ability to adjust, but you're not consciously stressing about it, but also you don't mind being seen, you don't mind being heard. So you come across basically as very confident, not in that abrasive, you know, off-putting way where someone comes in and they try to arrogantly steal all of the energy from the room, just very comfortable in yourself. Um, and it's captivating, it's charming. I think you come across as being able to hold a conversation very well, um, very engaging, um, you know, you can mix it up, you can do serious talk, laugh, all of those things. I think that the feeling here though is that it's quite a light energy. I don't think anyone's being too heavy or serious. Um, you can speak well, intelligently about maybe a variety of topics. We've got the King of Swords here, um, Page of Swords reversed. It feels almost like having some knowledge about lots of different things. So depending on what the topic is, you might have some knowledge and then you can ask the person, oh, you know about this, so, you know, tell me more. And then they get to feel like, you know, um, that you're interested and, and they have something of value to share through to topics where you're pretty much an expert here and you can share that with others. Um, so that's the initial impression and they leave thinking this and they're like, great, brilliant. And then there's this, as I said, this time after where they're reflecting, whether someone's asked them or they're just reflecting by themselves, <clears throat> excuse me, and they realise there was a lot going on, but I feel like I still don't really know you. I don't really know maybe practical things about you, like where you live, where you're from, how you met my, I don't know, whether it's friend, brother, son, father, daughter, sister, you know, whatever it is. I don't know how you met. Um, I don't know what you enjoy doing. I don't know where you work. I don't know what you're studying or I don't, you, you know, like I don't know any facts about you. Um, I don't know if you have siblings. Um, I don't know, I, do, I don't get a sense of the th sorts of things that get you excited and fired up, the sorts of things that really annoy you. It's almost like they realise they've maybe seen a, a mask in a way and not an artificial, constructed, you know, deceptive mask, but they've seen a version of you that... How do I explain it? Um... You know how in life we obviously all are in different roles, like we have our work selves, we have the self we are with our parents, we have the self that we are with our friends, we have the self that we are when we go and take our car to be fixed, you know, and just out of necessity, they all vary slightly, like it wouldn't really be appropriate to have some of those overlapping. Um, it's kind of like that, they, they realise they've seen a particular version of you and yourself. Um, and it's the version of you that's very well socialised, maybe you've done a lot of networking one way or another, very charming, very warm, you know how to make people feel special and, and heard, um, but there's, there's, you also know how to not reveal more than you would be comfortable with. So they have the impression that you're never going to be a person who leaves a party or an event and the next day you're agonizing over, oh my God, why did I say that? Why did I reveal this? Or, you know, chewing your nails off. I can't believe I had one too many drinks and I behaved that way or I showed them this side of myself. And if you are that person, that's they, they don't think that at all. So maybe you're someone who really overanalyzes and you haven't really given anything away, um, but for you, it's more than you normally would. So you're stressed, but no one else would think it was too much. Um, it's almost something quite practiced about how you're coming across. Again, it doesn't feel false, but it's it's a, it's like a really advanced way of keeping up a guard and not revealing everything about yourself to people who you are still learning about and getting to know and deciding how you feel about them. Um, so I think, yeah, they would say to each other or to someone asking, um, I really, yeah, I really, really liked them, but I, I feel like I want to see them again and I want to get to know more about them on a personal level, who they are. And you can see we have the moon here with the nine of cups. So it's like the, the things that you like, not because it works for the social group or because you're pleasing other people or being one of the team, but because, you know, nine of cups is a very self-focused energy. What do you like and enjoy just for you? Who are you at your core? With the moon here, I want to know the things you didn't share. And look, the three of cups reversed. I don't, I don't want to see you and how you fit very well in with the group. I want to know about you as a person. Now, to be honest, we've got that. And then we have Scorpio energy here with the judgment card. 
there is something about you that um, um and i'm not saying your all of your person's friends fancy you or anything like that but there is something about you or this interaction with you that seems to leave these people feeling that they they want to get to know you to what i would say is almost an inappropriate degree and what i mean by that is let's say you've met them once you might think afterwards they would be thinking okay that was cool yeah invite her again invite him again or i'd love to get to know them um fine and it would stop there but no there's a feeling that even after this first encounter they they re really 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 want to pry um that for some reason it's become of great importance to them that they know you know what are your secrets what do you regret in life what are your biggest fears what are your hopes and dreams it's too it's a bit much you know um for having just met someone uh, you know and known them for five minutes and for it being so early on um and i'm not saying in every case it's in a romantic sense that they want to know this i don't know maybe here and there but but just this feeling of and you may have experienced this in life anyway in other um situations that once people get a taste of you it's like they want to grab hold of you sit you on a chair tie you up and and keep you hostage until they have probed every part of your mind and your feelings and your thoughts and and you know it's like they want to get every single piece of information from you there is something about you that leaves people maybe craving more um yeah ace of pentacles ace of cups reverse so while you're with you know your person's friends or family or maybe it's both this is how they feel and again it's this feeling of newness so i feel this is like the first impact you've made or do make or will make it's like okay we've got the emotions everyone's happy great we've got the the solidity of the pentacle here so they're welcoming you into the group they want to see you again it, you know they already feel like you mesh well perfect but when you go these are reversed like they realize all along actually the cup and the pentacle weren't on offer it just seemed that way like maybe when you leave practically they don't have a way to reach you unless it's through your person you didn't leave a number they don't know what your full name is so they can't send you a friend request on facebook or anything like that you're kind of this like delicious but elusive ghost you know or, or something like that like when you're there when you're present you are present engaged and that's another thing when your attention is on someone it's fully on them and it makes them feel great and they can just soak it up and they want more and more of it and they feel gosh we're really connected here because you make people feel very special and very seen thus the feeling of connectedness but when you go they really you know you're gone they don't know how to track you down. They don't know if they're going to, if your person's going to bring you back again soon. Um, they wouldn't know how to find you. They haven't got your number. They don't know the things you like, where you go, where you might be. Um, and, and you're just gone. And they can't even imagine, okay, well, I remember, you know, I remember uh, you said that you worked as, um, oh gosh, I don't know, uh, you, you worked at the bank, so I imagine, you know, from this hour to this hour, Monday to Friday, you're probably in this sort of a location. They don't even have that. It's just like you've gone, poof, <laughs> you know, where are you? What what on earth, of all the things in the world that you could be doing right now, what are you doing? Um, okay, what else? yeah judgment reversed it's like actually i'm not sure i can form such a solid judgment or opinion of you because i'm realizing what i'm left more with is how you made me feel how you made everybody here feel i can make a judgment on that it felt great and i hope i see you again but but i can't i can't say anything about you your person your character because i'm not sure i know too much so your yeah your friend your your person's friends and family um like the way you make them feel like the way you come across i'm not seeing any concerns at least nothing yet about how you are with your person you know their friend their family member um but really feeling like oh actually you know that was great but i still feel like i don't know that much about you and also this strong strong feeling of wanting to know it's not like oh they were fine a bit boring i mean i don't know didn't really talk much don't know much about them oh well it's not like that it's that they really really want to know more 
The Tower and the Eight of Swords. In some cases, I'm looking at this combined with the Temperance reversed. There could be a feeling of you were holding back because you didn't want to be too outrageous or too shocking because you're already coming in in this energy of I am who I am and who I am is actually pretty charming. So I'm not that stressed about it. However, if I was to bring more to the table, it might be a little too much, maybe for the people that you guys are or for the situation we're in. Um, so there might be a feeling of you were showing your or operating or working at like 80 percent instead of 100 um because you didn't want to overdo it and and that could just be their impression because it feels like they're looking at you as someone who could really hold the attention of the room for as long as you wanted and if this is a gathering that's not really very appropriate so maybe you know so they may be assuming well that's why you didn't bring your full self because you weren't trying to be um distasteful you know um right okay well let's go to this deck and see what else then it's funny because you know the intention obviously is your person's friends and family what do they think and say about you um and really what they're showing or what would they you know if you met what they're showing is I don't exactly know what I think um, or what to say. I know how, like I said, I know how you made me feel and I really enjoyed your company and felt great around you. But um, in terms of you as an individual, I, I don't know, I need more information and um, I hope I get a chance to get it. So yeah, like I said, this could just range from complete, just, you know, um, just neutral curiosity through to some of your person's um, close friends, hopefully not family members, but I don't know, um, having a bit of like a crush on you or something, um, which of course could make things awkward. Um, yeah, figuring though that they, they want more of you, more of your energy. So what else please? So my, ooh, my viewers, persons, friends and family, look at that, exactly, yeah, nine of pentacles, this is it, you, you make this fantastic impression of someone who is confident, self-sufficient, secure, um, you're not nervous, awkward about anything, how you look, how you speak, how you dress, the things you like and don't like, how you react, you just are. Now, you may be thinking, I wish I was all those things, or, or maybe you are, but this is this is the impression that you leave, um, or, or could leave. Um, but, you know, the Nine, again, it's a very, you know, we go from the Nine of Cups to the Ten of Cups, it's the community, from the Nine of Pentacles to the Ten of Pentacles, again, community, family, roots. You come across as this very self-sufficient, independent, um, contained individual, You'll, you'll find doing you for you with your, just yourself. Um, and with the Nine of Pentacles, because the person in this card is in an energy of everything is just how I want it, like, because I've worked for it, I've made it this way, I'm super content emotionally, I'm not longing for anything, I'm not, not desperate for anything. Sometimes it can be hard to get close to them because you're thinking, well, I don't know what to offer or how to be or what to bring forward. And in some cases, if you're feeling maybe insecure in general or that day, it can always be intimidating as well. So yeah it's just very you know four pentacles self-contained confident um i'm good either way kind of energy i'm not looking for anyone's approval because i've got my approval and that's what matters most because i'm the only one who's stuck with me um yeah okay let's keep going so with the nine of pentacles you also come across as someone who has put in the work in whichever area of your life and you've seen the rewards and you're currently enjoying those rewards um so you're not a slacker you're not just latching on to this person because you want them to take care of you in any sort of a way um yeah and you come across as, as i don't know if it's like you smell nice you look nice you dress in a way that really works for you and your character and attitude and all of that and again remember this is um this is their opinion this is what they are thinking and saying about you
look at this again yeah the sun exactly you really make an impact but it's a lovely warm um inclusive impact um you might be shining as brightly as, as the sun but it's like you're saying to people why don't you come into my um orbit step closer to my aura and feel this warmth with me we've got leo energy there I'm surprised you don't have the star coming out you know it feels like you're kind of showing up as the star everyone wants to look at you everyone wants to talk to you the fall wow aries and aquarius the ten of wands reversed okay that's interesting let's keep going the knight of wands reversed yes it's like i they're, they're saying or thinking I think you were a little bit controlled and guarded. There's something extra that you weren't bringing. The Hanged Man reversed, Pisces. Got quite a few major arcana here. So you definitely, as I said, you definitely make an impact and you leave people thinking about you and actually wanting more of you. So let's say it's your person's parents. They could be saying, oh, why didn't you invite, you know, so-and-so whatever your name is uh to dinner on tuesday night or we were going to go to this event you know to some sporting event or to the theater or whatever it is why don't you why don't you bring so-and-so it's like they want you around they want more of you or if it's your person's friends it you know especially if it's a sort of thing that when um your person and their friends get together it's like oh please don't bring your partners <laughs> it's like they actually want you to come um let's see we've got the page of wands reversed and the th ooh, three of swords yeah under the ten of wands reversed okay so i think the more they get to know you the more they might feel that there is something that's um heavy something that's made you sad in the past that you've carried alone and that's partly what's made you so independent and strong um now in terms of their fears or concerns if we can even call it that they might feel that you're hard to pin down and they might wonder how you view things like commitment, what form or shape commitment would take for you. Would it be traditional? Would it be something else? How do you feel about the future um, moving in with your person if you don't already live with them um, or having children, that sort of thing. Commitments, ties. You're obviously very committed to yourself. <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> I don't mean, I mean, I think that's great. I don't mean it in that way at all. But you're committed to yourself, your growth, your improvement. Um, and to the things that you turn your attention uh, attention to, your responsibilities, that sort of thing. And you can see those through. But, you know, we haven't got, like, as I said, the Ten of Pentacles, Ten of Cups. And the Ten we do have is a Ten of Wands. It's, it's a burden. So how far into commitment are you able or willing to go with this person? You know, your person, their friend or family member. Um... So that might be something they're not sure of, whether it just hasn't come up, it's very early days, or they're looking at you and thinking, how does anybody pin down a person like you? You know, nine of pentacles, the sun. How would any one single commitment be enough for you? Um, now, that that might just be something they're thinking. Maybe you agree, like, yeah, I, I really demand a lot in my relationship. I don't know. Um bit harsh actually it's like they're looking at their friend you know your person their their family member and saying but are you are you enough really for this person that's that's not that's not nice um i mean yeah in some cases they could be looking at you and thinking you know your person's done very well to meet someone like you to capture and hold the attention of someone like you um but then, of course, remember, it's like they're seeing this one version of you. They're not seeing the other sides of you. Um, yeah, look at this. The sun and the hanged man reversed. That's exactly it. It's like when you're here, you are fully here. But when you're gone, it's like, well, where did you go? How can I reach you? I want more of you. Um, it's like, you know, when the sun goes down, we know where it is, where it's coming back, you know, in however many hours. If you, if you were the actual sun, you've just disappeared. You've gone somewhere else in the galaxy. Nobody knows where you are until the next time they see you or what you're doing. And they're worried that the darkness they're in will go on for an extended period of time. I think people, generally speaking, might find it easy to get very attached to you very quickly. And sometimes, actually, you might find that burdensome. 
because you're just thinking I'm just being friendly I'm just being me um, and it's, it's kind of like an all about them situation because if you're not giving much away they're not actually getting to know you the reason they're so attached is because they want more of how you make them feel um, okay let's just get one for this knight of wands seven of pentacles yeah they feel there's more to see like even more fire even more passion even more authenticity um yeah you've been holding back because that's what's appropriate that's what's respectful okay so three of swords ten of wands reversed oh gosh five of pentacles yeah so they may be sensing from you or just assuming that you are the way you are because there's been a, a time in your life where you've experienced lack lack of connection lack of love lack of support lack of money whatever it is and you took that as your motivation to to fill in those spaces for yourself and you've become very as i said self-sufficient independent capable competent um because you're not willing to feel that way again and you're not going to give control of these areas of your life over to other people um so that's something and it might be true or they might just be saying no one could be as confident and as successful as you if they hadn't have actively worked on these things or had something to push them to be this way i don't know if that's a projection or, or reality um okay so let's get a couple of oracle messages I think if this went on for a longer period of time and these people kept feeling like they weren't able to chip through and get to know you, to see who you are, maybe to see some of your vulnerabilities or something like that, they could end up feeling frustrated or feeling that maybe it's because you've decided they're not worthy or you don't really like them. So I don't think, I don't think that's what you would be thinking at all. But just as a heads up... If this is someone and you have met their friends and family several times or it's someone you're you know you're planning and hoping to meet their friends and family and to you know to keep it as a, as a you know a thing keep a thing going here and to keep meeting with them over time maybe try and make a conscious effort if you do recognize this as being your energy to try and just um give them a bit more show uh, maybe a different side of yourself not in like a manipulative calculated way but i think at some point they're going to need more they're going to need deeper access to you because it feels that everything about them is open and on display maybe like, like literally they're opening their house to you as well um but you're impenetrable unless you choose to be and partly it, it's you you're coming across as the sun you know it, people are an open book to you just because i think you have very good um you know you have a good way of, of seeing who people really are being perceptive knowing what to ask knowing what to follow up on you say the right things at the right times how to reassure them people feel that you're reading them like an open book and um it's just how it is it's not you're not doing it on purpose it just is but it does make them feel that you know more of them than they do of you and i, I just think at some point they would like a bit more angel therapy give your cares and worries to us angels and allow us to take your burdens that's it you come across oops, as this very um you know this healing angelic warm um person and you, and you create this space and environment and it just makes people want to come to you and talk to you maybe when you have this first interaction or when you had it randomly you know these people you've never met were coming up to you and telling you all about um you know their problems and, and you were giving advice and guidance and things and it was maybe a bit intense and, and surprising um and then you leave they leave and they're just feeling like gosh i really i really want that again And, you know, of course, if someone's telling you deep, personal, important things, that's going to make them feel very bonded and connected to you. But then when you're on the other side of that and, you know, it feels like you're not giving much away, you're just sort of saying, hmm, and nodding your head and trying to be supportive at the right times. It feels very one sided, like you don't feel that you've you haven't really opened up in that way with them. And I'm just I'm saying this because it's going back to that message where I feel like a, for a lot of you. You may feel that in your life people get attached to you very quickly, whereas actually you might not. You might just think, well, it was a nice interaction, but I don't think we have something special here. It just it just was nice, you know? And um, when I say that, I'm talking about, you know, someone you meet in a queue when you're in the bakery or something like that.
Passion, trust and follow your renewed passion in your love life and career. Yeah, you definitely come across as very passionate. Brilliant idea. Yes, your idea is divinely guided. Please take action to bring your idea to fruition. Okay, so maybe you literally have a great idea when you're with them, but it just feels like you're very supportive. Like you are this person who's very confident within themselves. Um, you're very passionate. And I can I can really see just a situation where one person is saying, you know, I'm worried about this, I'm concerned about that. I think maybe I can do this or should do that. And you're like, yes go for it. You're very encouraging, very supportive, which is what I mean. You could be the sun. You could be so hot and bright that you just scorch everybody and leave a really bad taste in everyone's mouth, but you don't. You just hold this bright, warm, encouraging space. Okay. I, um... I feel like the person you're asking about, you know, we're asking about their friends and family, but your person, I think they see, what, you know, another side of you to this, a side that's like maybe more doubtful, nervous, insecure, um, softer. They see behind the scenes of all this confidence and charisma. Um, and that's perhaps what makes this connection special for you versus any other connection because you can connect with your person in this way you feel comfortable showing them that side they accept that side and this fiery passionate side they're not just trying to make you be only this strong person that they can go to um basically i just think there's a lot about your connection with your person that their friends and family don't get don't understand um which is why they're left with some questions about, well, how did you two meet? How come you two were together? Even looking at you honestly and thinking, are you not a bit out of your person's league? Which is very harsh, you know, if it's their friend, their family member. Yeah, look, Penguin, the period of darkness that you've been experiencing is now passing, okay? Walrus, remain vigilant about the current situation. Pay attention to signs and omens and let them dictate your choices. And we have shark. Trust your instincts to discern the truth of the situation. So they might also feel like you're very intuitive, you're very observant. Um, that you are someone who, you know, you trust your intuition. You... You're not the sort of person who will say, oh yeah, no, Jim, ew, I don't like Jim, you know, just because everyone else says, says that about Jim. You will, you will form your own opinion um, based on your own interaction with Jim and your own, um, you know, intuition and inner knowing, um, which again connects with that self-confidence that you have. But again, we've got this subtle message of them starting to feel as they get to know you a bit more that you have been through something intense and heavy. That's how come you're so strong now when you give such great advice. But also, again, anyone going through anything difficult, they just are drawn to you. Um, so you could be very empathic as well, or at least you can make people feel that you are and you're, you want, you know, you get what they're going through. Um, even if it's it's something that's very unlike anything you've been through in your life they just sort of feel that somehow you understand the the feelings and the emotions um and they could be left with the impression that you bring something out of them like let's say i don't know it's a barbecue that you're all at and everyone's in a good mood everyone's in their head thinking i'm going to a barbecue and you kind of understand what you know what that might be like what to anticipate and then they come and talk to you. I mean, in five minutes, they're talking about, you know, this concern, that concern, the grief they're feeling over this and, and whatever else. And, and then they're thinking, they're left with the impression of where did that come from? It was a barbecue. Why was I talking about the fact that I never healed from when my guinea pig died as a child? You know, like, what? Um, yeah, you just, you have a way of, 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 it's not that you bring these things out of people, but they just want to bring them up and tell you. Um... Yeah, angel therapy, it's, it's like people look at you as a therapist sometimes, um, and I think your person's friends and family included. Also, the remaining vigilant, paying attention to signs, that sort of thing, and then trust your instincts. I really feel, and some people, I do think there will be maybe just like a couple of people in a whole group of people connected to your person that may take their interest in you too far. 
As I said, some of them will just be looking out for you, hoping to bump into you, to see you again, hoping you'll come to another gathering, event, that sort of thing. And that's fine. Um, but then there may be just like one or two have a bit too much of an interest and they're seeking you out because you just leave this um, lovely energy behind. It's like you were wearing a really nice perfume or aftershave and when you've left the room, it lingers behind you and everyone's like, oh, it's really good. You know, <laughs> I hope they come back soon so we can have more of that. Um, yeah, okay. So overall, I think you make a very powerful impression. What your person's friends and family would say or have said about you is, again, I'm hearing you're too good. Oh, it's horrible. You're too good for this person. And maybe it's not about too good, but you're unexpected. You're so full of, I don't know, like confidence, life, success. It's a lot. Maybe you're very different to people they've brought home or introduced to friends before, but that's something they're thinking. They're thinking you're very confident. Um, they want more of you. They want you around. You're intelligent. You're fun. Um, but very compassionate as well. But I just feel, I guess one thing to say would be over an extended period of time, um, if, you, if you're able to, try to give them a bit more of yourself, a different side of yourself, because they want it. And you know, if we really, really want something and we're trying and we're making no headway, eventually we're going to get fed up. Um, and then we'll project our own thoughts and feelings onto the situation. And they may project onto you that you've decided they're not worthy of seeing who you are in your entirety, um, that they're not good enough or that you don't trust them or like them. You know, all the things that probably aren't true. So yeah, try do try to, like let's say you always go to your person's friend's house to hang out or their parents. Why not, you know, at some point, when you feel it's appropriate invite them to your house so they get to see a bit more of like how you live where you live how you decorate your home the things in your home that mean something to you you know it's just your space so you're inviting them into your space in that way those sorts of things okay so i will leave this here but i hope this was interesting not traumatic i hope it was fun um hope it resonated and i will see you soon bye